This is part 2 of the Stereo 3D Toolkit version 1.5 tutorial. As promised, I will be talking about Cinema 4D. The first thing we need to understand is the new stereo camera rig that is included with the toolkit. The Stereo 3D camera behaves like a normal camera in every way, except it has an additional Stereo 3D tab. This is where you will find all of your stereoscopic controls. If you watched part 1, some of these should look familiar. View 3D cameras will turn on and off the visibility of the left and right camera. View Guides turns on and off the visual guide system. These guides are designed to help you compose shots in Stereo 3D. They help you stay in control of where your objects are in relation to the viewing screen, as well as avoid eye strain and other problems that can occur. Interaxial controls the distance between the left and right camera. The higher this value is, the farther apart the cameras are, and the stronger the stereo effect is. Zero parallax represents where your viewing screen will be when you watch your scene in stereo 3D. Auto depth of field locks your depth of field settings to your zero parallax locator. This is useful if you are exporting a depth channel to apply effects at compositing time. Width and height should always match your render settings output values. Redline is better known as the 1 30th rule. It is the interaxial distance times the value in this box. You never want an object to cross this line as it will cause eye strain in the viewer. To better understand zero parallax, I have added an object to the scene. The checkerboard in the viewport represents the viewing screen. As you adjust your zero parallax setting, you can see the object begins to pop out. As you move your camera around the object, the zero parallax locator remains fixed in front of your camera. I have added animation to the camera. Now I'm going to go through my timeline and make sure everything stays within the guides. At the beginning of the timeline, the zero parallax locator is in a good location. However, the red line is a little bit too close to the screen. I'm going to turn down the interaxial distance to correct this. Now that it looks right, I will add a keyframe to the interaxial and zero parallax settings. The next camera angle is much closer to the object. This means the interaxial distance needs to be turned down and the zero parallax locator needs to be moved closer to the camera. When the guides look good again, add keyframes to the interaxial and zero parallax settings. At the end of the timeline, we are far away from the object. This means we can turn up our interaxial distance and move the zero parallax locator away from the camera. When the guides look well balanced again, add keyframes to the interaxial and zero parallax settings. Before we export to After Effects, I have added one additional element to the scene. This light that follows the camera will be used as an emitter for a particular when we start working in After Effects. When it is time to render, you need to export the left and right cameras separately. In the Perspective viewport, select Cameras, Scene Cameras, Cam LF. This is the left camera for your scene. In your render settings, set your output path for your left channel. It is a good idea to keep your left and right channel renders in separate folders. You will need to add underscore capital L capital F to the end of the file name of your left channel render. This enables After Effects to know which eye the renders go with. We will now need to enable our compositing project file. Make sure that save is checked. Set your target application to After Effects. Make sure relative is unchecked and include 3D data is checked. I'm going to enable multi-pass image. You can copy and paste the file path and name from your regular image. I'm going to make this a PNG as well. Under multi-pass, I'm going to select depth. This will export a black and white depth channel, which will allow me to add depth of field effects inside of AE. With all of our settings in place, 
make sure the left camera is enabled and render the left channel. When the left channel is finished rendering, repeat the process for the right channel, replacing underscore LF with underscore RT. Make sure your right camera is enabled and render the right channel. You now have two sets of renders, one for your left channel and one for your right channel. Now it's time to open After Effects and import our AEC files. Bringing in the AEC file will also import your footage as well as create a composition with your 3D camera system. In the Stereo 3D Toolkit, set your mode to Cinema 4D and press New. This will bring up a menu with a list of the compositions in your project. When you select one, it will check for the S3D camera rate. If everything is there, press OK. You now have a left composition, a right composition, and a master Stereo 3D composition. This is where you'll find all of your stereoscopic controls as well as your 3D preview. We now have the same camera system inside of After Effects that we created in Cinema 4D. Inside the left channel, I'm going to add a new solid for my background. I'm going to use the horizon effect to create a simple background that will move with the camera animation. The background was only added to the left channel. When we look at our preview, things appear to be broken. Make sure your mode is set to Cinema 4D and press Update. This will rebuild the right channel and swap any left channel footage for the right channel counterpart. The next thing I'm going to do is add the depth of field effect. To do this, I'm going to go inside of the left channel and pre-compose the left image sequence. Inside of this new pre-composition, I'm going to bring the left channel depth pass. Now I'm going to create an adjustment layer and add the lens blur effect. Select your depth channel and set the iris radius. We now have a nice little depth of field effect on our Cinema 4D render. The depth of field effect has only been applied to the left channel so far. We still need to run the update function to make the left and right channels match. After running the update command, things don't look quite right. Let's take a look at the flowchart to see what happened. As you can see, the left and right channel are both linked to the same pre-composition. This means that our image is no longer stereoscopic. Instead, we are seeing the same image in both the left eye and the right eye. This is easily fixed by adding underscore capital L capital F to the end of the pre-composition name. This lets the toolkit know that you wish to turn this into a stereo pair. It will automatically create a right channel and swap all the footage for you. After running the update function again, we now have a left channel and a right channel pre-composition and our preview looks correct again. Taking a closer look at our pre-compositions, you can see that they both have a zero parallax locator and a camera linked to the master system. The last thing I'm going to do is add the particular effect. This will use the emitter we created in Cinema 4D to create a trail of particles through our stereoscopic scene. I've made an animation preset ahead of time. Feel free to make your own or skip this step if you do not have the particular effect. The emitter we created in Cinema 4D is now leaving a trail of smoke through our scene. Because this effect has only been added to the left channel so far, our preview yet again looks broken. 
we simply need to rerun the update command to make everything match again.